Hey guys, back in the dog house today. Uh, I really haven't been doing much the last couple of days. I've uh, been busy doing other things. You know how it is. So this is not a job, it's a hobby. But anyway, the last couple of days, what I did do is I made myself a, a little metal break. Very simple, very straightforward. Three pieces of metal, a couple of hinges, a couple of pipes. Super, super simple. Uh, I want to show you what I did. I'm not going to go through all the process of showing you my welding, blah, 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 blah. I'll show you what I did. And if you like it, if you want to make one, go for it. Super simple. Here it is, guys. Here's what I've got. I've got three pieces of metal. That's all it is. Here's my base. I had this piece of channel. Okay, that means good base. Three inches wide. So I got a chunk of that off. Then I had this piece of angle here. Little piece of rusty angle. I think okay, that'll that'll work. That'll be my bender portion. Got my two hinges. The only important part about these hinges is I cut the wings of the hinges off and only kept the barrel but the center of the barrel has to be right dead center of this face and this face so this here is your pivot point your pivot point is right right in here right in the middle of this barrel so you got to cut yourself a slot on both the the top and the side of this base and you have to do the same with this piece of angle that you're using as the uh, the bender part. I don't know what you call this one. This is what I mean by the hinge has to be, the hinge barrel has to be dead center of this part right here. You can see, here's the top of my uh, brake. Here's the front. Here's the barrel for the my hinge. And I had to cut a notch out of the top here, and I had to do the same with this here. There you can see that's right in the center of the barrel here. It doesn't look like the center because it's just the way I have it painted or whatever, but this, this here is the center. Otherwise, you're going to, it's going to be egg shaped when you rotate it. That's the most important part. And one other thing I did on this here, on this part here, I ground the bottom. Right here, I ground this part here. Because if you don't, if you don't grind this here flat, then the, your, your metal is going to get rounded on here. So I just put on my belt sander and I ground this part here. That makes your uh, your bend a lot crisper. If you want like a radius, well then just leave this here the way you buy the uh, the sheet metal. You'll get the, uh, the radius on it. You'll see what I'm talking about if you just take a look at the end of your angle. Okay, here's what I made. Made, made. This here, if you leave this here the way it is, if you leave everything the way it is, you're going to have a radius on your on your metal because this here is a radius. What I did, I ground this here down. All there here, I ground it down. Didn't grind it down flat this way. I ground it this way, so it's the same here. It's the same plane across there. Basically, if this here was my sander. I had a big belt sander, a belt sander right across there. That puts it an edge on here. That'll give you a sharper, sharper edge. Anyway, that's what I did. You can do what you want. Anyway, that's all it is. Just a piece of, piece of uh, C channel, piece of angle, 
and I got a little piece of one inch or inch and a half by inch and a half, I think it is. Yeah, inch and a half by inch and a half. And this is the only piece that I've had to buy. I didn't have any small angle. And what I did was I drilled holes through here. I drilled through holes through here from the other end. And what I did, I, I turned it over. I drilled from this side here in the center. It's a lot easier going this way here than it is trying to get it lined up in the center here. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. But anyway, I drilled through here. And when I put it, when I drilled this, these holes, I placed this on top of my bait where I wanted it. And I put a magic marker down here. No, I, I took my drill, sorry, I took my drill and I made a little mark on the base. Then I drilled my hole for this bolt here. This here is a bolt, 3 8 bolt. This here is just a little spring. Put a little bit of washer on it. The washer just so it doesn't get, doesn't get, the spring doesn't get caught up on it. These here, what I really, really like, these are little, Cam locks. I, I don't know what the real name is, but I, I got them on Amazon to find by just by mistake. I was going to use wing nuts, wing nuts on here. I just tightened that, which is not a bad idea, but I feel well, hey, this here's a this is an even better idea. Right, put it, put it on, and lock it down. Whenever, whenever I finish bending, unlock it. Take my sheet out. Done deal. It's locked. Back here, I have a little piece of angle. Because I'm not building the sand for this. I want this here to be super portable. So I can put it on my workbench, clamp it down, and use it. That's all it is, guys. That's all it is. Just simple little pieces. These are, these are the cat's ass right here. And you put a piece in, stand her up, way to go, take it out, done deal. What I did for my handles, just underneath here, I had a piece of pipe, welded a little chunk of the pipe on here, another little chunk on the other end, my piece, put another piece of pipe in there. You come out, no problem. Stick it back in, do your job. Way you go. And of course, you got to paint it really pretty. <laughs> but anyway, here's the little cams I was saying. They work so slick. Boom. Lock her down. And underneath here, you see I have a spring. Just like that. It's a lot better than the, the uh, having a, a nut on here. I'm using a wrench. Or I, I started out with a wing nut. The wing nut works good, but these are super dirt cheap. Again, I got them on Amazon. I'm not being sponsored by them or nothing like that, but I just, I just stumbled upon them and uh, I grabbed them. Yeah. Then I just used my uh, welding clamps. Vice grips, clamp it onto my uh, clamp it onto my table. There you go, Bob, your uncle. So anyway, guys, that's what I did. I needed a, uh, a little bit of a break, not a coffee break or beer break, but a metal break, and that's how I solved it. My son has one at his shop, but it's it's so far back in his, his shop with all the other. All the other equipment he has is going to be a real pain in the ass to get it out. So I, I might, well, I might have to get it out for the heavier stuff. Anyway, it is a heavy break that he has. I got some heavier metal here that I got to bend. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably just bring the metal over to his shop. Do it that way. In the meantime, I got this next deal over here. It'll do everything I want to do. And what this you can make whatever you want. I made this here three feet long, three feet wide, whatever you want to call it. And I was going to make it four foot, but my piece I had, the angle, just, I just couldn't 
five to four foot piece. And again, this is made out of just a scrap that I have in the shop. So, uh, you know, I bought the one piece of inch and a half angle. Inch and a half angle, uh, three feet long, cost me $25, believe it or not. $25 Canadian. It's crazy. I'm just glad I didn't have to buy all this other stuff. But anyway, yes, it's, it's nuts. But anyway, guys. Hang around. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now.